<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, back here with another Xbox 360 related tutorial, and this here is a bit more of a specific one and a little bit of a, well, I guess, indie tutorial here. I'm going to be showing you all if you have a hard modded Xbox 360, if you have a RGH or a JTAG, just anything like that, how you can run these Xbox Live indie games right here. Now, from back in the day, I only purchased a couple of them and I was able to back them up here. I ended up purchasing Epoxy and also, of course, I made a game with zombies in it. Uh, a fantastic one right here. However, you'll run into an issue. You can get these all installed, but if you try to launch any of them, you end up just getting a crash and you're not able to really go any further on these. So I'm going to be showing you all how you can actually play these games. Sometimes you're going to get an error, sometimes you might get a black screen or just something like this. So let's go ahead, hit OK on that. It's going to boot us out and we're going to get this all actually working and set up here properly. So for this, you're going to need a few things. You're of course going to need your hard modded Xbox 360. You're also going to need a USB drive of some kind to transfer files to and from the system, unless you're going to use something such as FTP, and you're going to need a computer to download a update file that we're going to need. However, one other prerequisite we will have here, which I'm not going to cover in this specific video, is you are going to need the avatar update already installed for your system and your dashboard. I have a full video covering how to update your dashboard and at the end of that also showing how to install the avatar data on here. So make sure your avatar actually shows up and you have the avatar data installed. With that all being said, grab a USB drive, move over to your computer, and let's get this all set up. This will not cover grabbing the games themselves. I know my own games I ended up purchasing years ago when it was available and I had backed them up onto a USB drive. However, on here, you really just need one download to complete this process, which is the XNA title update. I have it linked down below in the description from Digix, from Rick the moderator here, who really came in handy for this. For this, you can just go to the link down below in the description, download this title update zip, and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Next up, we are going to need our USB drive inserted, and make sure it is running in a FAT32 file system, and it is MBR. If you have a hard modded Xbox 360 and you've been using USB drives on it, you should be familiar with this process already, but it must be FAT32. Next up, we can now transfer over the games as well as the required title update. So if you're going to transfer over the games themselves here, this is how it should look. I have a couple in here, of course, and this here is going to be the title ID, which is just going to be indie games, and then you have a couple media ID folders right here. This one is just some metadata, it seems, but these two in the 000002 directory actually contain the game files themselves. I know this one is epoxy, and this one is I made a game with zombies in it. So to get the games transferred over, you will need to go over to a USB drive. If you do not have this already, create a new folder, and we're going to call it content, exactly like that. Inside of the content folder, you're going to make a new folder here, and you want to call it 16 zeros. So count it out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Once that's all done, go in here, and for your indie games, you're going to grab the main title ID folder, which should be 584E07D2, since they're all going to show up as indie games. You can copy this out, and paste it into the zeros directory on your USB drive. There we go, thankfully they are small, but that is all done. Next up, we now need the indie game title update. So we can right click and extract this over here. And once it is extracted, we should have an accompanying folder. Inside that folder, check it out, we have the same title ID right here, 584E07D2. You're just going to want to right click, copy this out, go into the zeros folder, and paste it. And if it asks you to merge anything, make sure you do that. So now at this point, we have a new folder here, which is going to be this one, the 000B0000 folder. And we have the title update that we've been needing to get everything up and running. So with that all set up here, this should be working properly. We can now come back out, right click, eject our USB drive and move it over to the console. Once you're back over at your console, launch Freestyle or Aurora, whatever you're going to be using, and make sure you plug in your USB drive. From here, we're now going to have to transfer that folder. So we can bring up the file manager on Aurora. You can press the back button, go to file manager, go over to USB, wherever you have hooked it up, go into the content directory, the zeros directory, 
And here's what we're going to need right here. We got the community game one. We're just going to highlight this and we're going to go over to the left and copy it out. Now we can go to the right bumper by going to system, tap that, go to your internal hard drive, which should be HDD1, go into content, go into the zeros directory, and we're going to paste this in right here. Say yes. You are going to have to do it this way because the games copy over just fine, but the title update does not copy over through the main dashboard. So we have to use a file manager of some kind to transfer it over. As you can see, it's now been transferred. So we can go back, go back yet again, all of that. And at this point here, I'm going to press the start button for settings, go to content, and I'm going to go ahead, scan for title updates, letting it do that there. It did find the title update, which is going to back up automatically. And at this point, because I have my settings dialed in for this, it's going to scan for new content and it should bring in the two new games right here. The first one, of course, being Epoxy and the second one being I made a game with zombies in it. So I've also removed the USB drive just to make sure it's not going to be on there. But with that being said, let's go ahead, launch this game here. And you're going to notice a difference here. We end up getting this Xbox Live Indie Games splash screen, which is exactly what we were missing. And at this point, you can now boot up this game and play it. Since this is now working, I'll go ahead, quit out of that. And we can even launch Epoxy just to make sure that one is also working. So here we go. We're back over here. Here's my only other indie game that I have. Let's go ahead and give this a launch. It was able to apply the title update. It ends up finding the splash screen here. So this is the exact update that we need for the backend to actually run this game. And as you can see, this launches. So that's about all there is to it. You don't have to do too much else here. I know there's been some confusion and even I was confused for years where some people have said you have to go into dash launch, you have to change certain settings such as fake live or auto live, but thankfully you don't have to do any of that. Really the only things that you need are you need the avatar data on your console installed and you also need that XNA title update. And once you have those two in place, you can run your indie games just fine. So that's really about it for this video here. Hopefully it helped out, hopefully you are back up and running and you're able to play some of the cool lost indie games that were on the Xbox 360. Anyways, that's about it for this video here. If you enjoyed it, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone.